I don't have much time, so I'm just going to put a quick video out on this concept. Um, basically, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show some shrinking sun footage. It's actually growing sun footage. It's at the sunrise, where you see the sun growing in size, as is empirically verifiable. And then I'm going to mimic the same motion with a yellow ball and show that if the ball and the sun move the same distance from the same starting and ending size diameter points uh, in the same amount of time, they mimic each other exactly. In other words, the ball retreating and the sunset shrinking or the sunrise, the sun ball growing in size upon sunrise or shrinking in size upon sunset, you can mimic exactly the same size dynamics with a ball which would be very good evidence to further support the empirical verification and discovery that anybody can reproduce in their backyard with a cell phone uh, that the sun grows and shrinks upon rising and setting, which is death to the heliocentric model. Okay, so here I am with the ball, and I'm mimicking a low sun, flat earth model dynamic with a small low sun that is retreating in the distance. And here is some footage of a very dimmed sun at sunrise. Often the sun is very dimmed. The sunrise doesn't have any rays. You can make out perfectly the edge of it. And in order to measure its diameter at from one position to the next, very good, productive, solid, empirical way to empirically measure the size of the sun changing upon sunrise or sunset. This is unlike when the sun is higher in the sky where it becomes rayed and you can't make out its edge and can no longer measure it. But the greatest, as I've discussed previously, the greatest amount of change in the size of the sun is at the latest and earliest points of its being in the sky, sunrise and sunset. So this is productive to use this footage here. And that's also, you know, it's, the sun isn't always in this non-rayed form at sunrise and sunset, but it often is. So here's this footage where you can see the sun growing in size. Now let's just before we go into the measurements, let's compare my moving the ball versus the sun footage. Get an idea that they're the same motions. It took a bit to for me to get this the footage with the ball to mimic in close enough approximation the sun footage here. The footage of me with the ball is actually about a half second more. These are approximations that I use in this video just for the sake of time. Other people could find better ways to do this or more precise ways to conduct this experiment that I'm conducting here. I just wanted to get it out on YouTube for an initial test. I, I assume others will do a much better test. I am just uh, don't have a whole lot of time these days, so I'm just going to do the best I can at the time allotted. So the footage is roughly of the same time, about a half second off. And here we compare the two positions of the sun that we'll be using. And here are the two positions of the ball that we'll be using. Sorry, they're going in. The sun is is growing in size, and the ball is is shrinking in size. Sorry, they're the opposite, but I'm not. It's not real high tech over here on my end. Just using the resources available to me. So here you've got the larger position for the ball and the sun compared. So matching them up, they appear to be very good approximation, the same size. This, I chose footage right when it was starting to distort. So you can see that left side of the sun is getting a little fuzzy, but we know where the edge is because it's because we can see the right side. We can still see that clear edge. And now we compared the smaller size of ball and sun. Get them lined up near each other so we can put some lines across them. Microsoft Paintbrush gives us the ability to make perfectly parallel lines. You can see those are the same size, the ball and the sun there. So what we have here is about a half second difference in the timing of the footage, but the ball and the sun, the same size, 
and the low and the smallest and the largest diameter. So we have an approximate comparison, but nevertheless, one is very close, in my opinion, it's very close. Now let's find out how far the sun moves. And here we measure it. Line up basically the first position and the second position and see the, how big that red line is there. And now let's see how far the ball moves. In a timing that is about a half second difference from how the length of footage we have for the sun. So I've got on the left there is the smaller position and the right there is the larger. And I basically make, you can use the background, the, the frame and the, the window framing and the, the picture frame and the, and the molding there between the lower gray and the higher white part of the wall. And you can find out the red cross there is the where the smaller position is right there at the crosshairs in other words the blue and the red x should be in the same spot you can line it up with the frame and the windowsill as i just said so we can therefore find the distance move the uh, smaller position over to the larger next to the larger put it in the crosshairs, draw a yellow line to get the distance. Now let's take the sun distance and put it next to this distance of the ball. Compare the two, get them right next to each other and compare the two. Blow them up so we can see, and we see that the red, they're very similar. The red line is slightly longer, maybe about 10% longer. So the ball footage is a little bit longer and the distance traveled perception from the observer, which is the camera, on the other side of the room, is very slightly less. But for the sake of this initial experiment, which can be repeated by others, I'm just going to go with it because I like these approximations and the comparisons involved within. And that's the experiment. That's what we have. We have a ball very closely approximating the changing of size of the sun and we can see these are approximations and this can be done much sharper by somebody else but the point here is that the perspective and changing of size of the ball is very closely mimicking the sun here now we have all kinds of anti-flat earthers out there screaming at all, all of us flat earthers saying we're all insane for obeying the empiricism of our eyes and noticing the changing of the unrayed sun at sunrise and sunset we're all told that this is we're, we're very crazy for paying attention to this science this empiricism because we need solar filters and there's apparently all kinds of distortions the atmosphere is, is supposedly uh changing the size of the sun magnifying it and, and anti-magnifying it whatever well what about this? Now we have a replication, and at least a first attempt, which can be sharpened to make the approximation smaller. And we see that by perspective, a ball receding in the from an observer very, very closely matches exactly what the sun is doing in its changing of size. And the best conclusion here is is that the empiricism of the sun's changing in size upon rising and setting is just precisely what we're seeing. No need to introduce theories of, of sun glare, which when we can see a clear edge or the changing of size by the atmosphere in the sun and so forth. Those are not science. Those are theories. All we need is the empiricism, the zeteticism of our eyes to know what the sun is doing and this ball experiment is just a verification of that i guess what i'm trying to say here is if the sun is not shrinking in size and it's an optical illusion of some sort as the anti-flat earthers say then why is it following perfectly along perspective perspective lines it's that would be too much of a coincidence 
that it's shrinking and by optical illusion and happens to be doing just by perspective lines, forget it. No way. That's not right. Forget the theories. Empiricism is more powerful than theory. The sun is shrinking in size and growing in size upon sunrise and sunset. Heliocentrism is dead. This is a fatal blow to the heliocentric model of the solar system. Now, this experiment involves a lot of precision using graphics and so forth. You have to get the size of the sun and the ball the same. You have to use continuous time-lapse footage of the sun and continuous footage of the ball. So, there's, so you've got the, with no zooming or anything, everything has to be the same. And you have to find the frames where the sun and the ball match each other. You have to make sure they're the same. You have to, when you're walking, the time-lapse footage and the footage of the ball have to have to match each other and the duration there's a lot of things i have to really so there's room for that's why i keep saying this is an approximation now anybody else can repeat this and do it with so much more precision i really hope somebody else does a much better job than i did but uh i'm satisfied with the initial results of this and uh, it does appear to the best theory and best conclusion i believe on what this video shows is that the sun and the ball are changing in size by perspective in a very very similar way and if this if the sun was changing in size due to glare or whatever all kinds of the theoretical reasons that anti-flat earthers give rise to then they're gonna have to explain why an experiment like this involves a ball and the sun both retreating and changing in size by perspective in enormously similar ways.